Well, welcome back. China's remarkable growth in the last three decades can largely be attributed to its trade relationship with the West, particularly Canada. As one of the first Western countries to reestablish ties with China, Canada has always taken pride in this partnership. And so it begs the question, why would Xi Jinping involve himself in the affairs of countries like Canada? And what personal or national advantages does it bring to him and to China? Sam, I'll begin with you. Well, uh, as Juno Katsia pointed out, uh, the methods of control are actually really what we would call a velvet influence operation. China seeks to very carefully uh, manipulate Canada's politicians so that Canada uh, would not stand up as uh, MP Michael Chan did and say there's a genocide happening in Xinjiang. When China sees someone speak out against its global interests, there, there could be, uh, uh, as I have recently reported, actual tracking of a Canadian election candidate and uh, Chinese security agents allegedly approaching voters in a Toronto riding. This is scary stuff. Uh, my reports suggest that, of course, China is always looking to increase its trade with countries around the world. Uh, there can be, of course, uh, benefits on both sides. But the dark side of this is as my reports have led to a, a commission in British Columbia that discovered there was 1.2 billion in large cash suspicious transactions in a BC government casino in one year. And uh, look, this is, the this is the type of finding that led me to discover that very powerful tycoons, very much part of Z's trade, were involved also in criminality and in espionage type transfers. Uh, Sun Tzu preached that you don't you you can take land without firing a shot in a nutshell uh, in a dark way. That's what Z wants to do with trade, I believe. Go ahead. As you say, so further on that, and of course, Sam and I have worked together for some time as. Uh, um, you know, on his book, Willful Blindness, and seeing what's been going on, and certainly the trade-based, um, you know, uh, advantage that China has sought uh, with uh, politicians uh, to on influence is profound. The most important thing is one: they do not follow the WTO rules to which they signed on to when we uh, gave them the the, uh, the and favored nation st status. Uh, number two: they're using slave labor uh, throughout uh, China, not only with the, the Uyghurs but also di other dissidents and and Han Chinese. Uh, this is a great advantage for them. So we are trading off our ethical and moral values here in the West to get cheap products from China. And so people need to look at themselves and our government officials. Why are we allowing this to take place? Well, but, but, but in response to Sam, Sam is talking about how they are pushing their own community here for, for a votes and so on. The majority of the Chinese community in Canada is not Canadian citizens. They are residents. Mm -hmm. So if you are not a Canadian citizen, you cannot go vote. Mm -hmm. I believe that they are harassing their own community, not just for the election reasons, mm -hmm. but also it's very important to collect the information about the Canadian technology, the Canadian people, the well, minorities. Well, and that goes back to the police stations and the spy that's, balloon. That's Why correct. they need to establish those? It's very important because this is their center command. That's where they need people in the ground that they can trust, they can collect this information. None of this can disturb us more once again, I would just bring it back again to our Canadian government. The FBI reacted very swiftly up upon receiving this information. There was an arrest by the FBI. There was attacking in every this police station, and they shut down immediately. When we send our public, when One Free World International send an email to the public safety minister, a letter, he sent us this letter, basically from the Canadian government, basically saying CIS is doing their job, RCMP doing their job. If you, if you saw something called 911. So you felt like they dismissed you? They are, they are, do you think that they're talking to a child? You think that I'm a child? Besides, I'm a Canadian citizen. I'm a human rights organization. You're talking to five years old. Call 911 if you saw a Chinese spy. Are you crazy? Are you nuts? Yeah. Dean? No, I was going to say very quickly, on, you know, the, that arrest that took place, that police officer was trained in British Columbia at the British Columbia uh, um, uh, institute, policing institute, uh, and ultimately, so we've been training the police on our techniques, and now they are intimidating our citizens in Canada and throughout the world. Shen, as a member yes. of the Chinese community, have you personally experienced any threats from the CCP? I think I can, I have been re, um, uh, experiencing all the ways that they can do. 
besides, they can they 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 kill me uh, physically. Ha- yeah, they're. Can you can you describe some of the ways in which that's happened? Uh, they don't come to me directly, but they use the power that they have the uh, they have the people's network in Canada, and uh, even. Um, many of my friends, old friends, they told me that they cannot, uh, they cannot be my friends for uh, any longer because they are afraid of. If wow. even they, they don't come to my home, and they say, I really can't, I really doesn't want to go to your home because I think your home been monitored by the Chinese government, and uh, it's a kind of um, uh, like like a like a. Uh, uh, cancer is uh, just uh, smeared everywhere. I would jump in there and say, I, I really want to comment that as a reporter that's uh, done the shoe leather work, has gone into uh, Chinese Canadian, Uyghur Canadian, Hong Kong communities, I can concur fully that there is there is fear. People will, I will say, do you know about the United Front Work Department? People will nod and take notes. They'll, they'll uh, write an intelligence agency down, but they won't say the words. This is a real fear, and this is what caused me uh, really to be outraged by the special rapporteur's report. He said there's nothing wrong in diaspora communities in Canada, when in fact we know that powerful agents, and it's the networks involved, not just the police stations, the community knows they're out there. What's more, as I've said before, they know that some of the actors are, are, are gangster thugs. So uh, this is a situation where some people involved in political don- donations, getting close to our politicians are the same ones allegedly involved in police station networks. And the situation is getting worse. Last point, I have just reported Justin Trudeau's government has been asked repeatedly to mount a full of government response against these covert police operations. My most recent report for the Bureau showed Trudeau did not act. Complete inaction. That is a good segue into our next segment, but just very quickly before we go, Does Iceland have any concerns about interference by the Chinese? Is that a worry? Well, we haven't seen uh, any Chinese interference in our politics, uh, but uh, those allegations that I have been following here in Canada are, of course, uh, worrisome and underlines that uh, we need to be cautious and uh, have our our eyes open. I just came from Vancouver, and I spoke to a couple of uh, politicians there. There was an OEC meeting in in Vancouver, and... uh, uh, I was told that the Chinese consulate in Vancouver has around 300 staff members. So you, you ask yourself, uh, what are those people doing? What do they do? And uh, China has the second largest embassy in Reykjavik, Iceland, right behind the Polish headquarters. But we have uh, not seen any intervention, and hopefully you won't see They don't see know any. it yet. Yes. All right, hold that thought. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> 